Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have z minus 2 equals z to the fourth power divided by 2z squared plus 8 and we're going to be solving for z values. All right, great. So let's see how we can solve a problem like this one. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. Notice that we don't want the denominator to be 0, so 2z squared does not equal negative 8. That's required, which means z squared does not equal negative 4. So we got to make sure that z is not 2i or negative 2i, because those would make our expression undefined. Okay? All right, great. So let's go ahead and solve that under, uh, under those conditions and cross multiply. Multiply these two things. We're going to get z minus 2 multiply by 2z squared plus 8 equals z to the fourth power. And then let's go ahead and write the z to the fourth first and distribute the left-hand side, but let's write it on the right-hand side. We're going to get 2z cubed plus 8z minus 4z squared minus 16. And now we're going to put everything on the same side. Let's do it. z to the fourth minus 2z cubed plus 4z squared, if you go ahead and write it in standard form, minus 8z plus 16 is equal to 0. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Take a good look. Do you recognize what's going on? If not, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to use substitution and turn this into something that you'll recognize. And that is z equals 2y. Any variable is fine, but I'm going to use y here. And when you do that substitution, you're going to get something super duper nice. Notice, 2y, when you raise it to the fourth power, is going to be 16y to the fourth. When you raise z to the third power, it's going to be 8y cubed multiplied by 2. You're going to get 16y cubed. And then you're going to get 16y squared. And then you're going to get 16y. And finally, plus 16 equals 0. Make sense? So everything has 16 in it with the plus minus sign. They alternate. There's a reason behind it. And of course, we're going to divide everything by 16, and we're going to get y to the fourth minus y cubed plus y squared minus y plus 1 equals 0. Does this make sense to you at all? If not, let's go ahead and write everything as a power of negative y, because the even powers are going to take care of the sign, and then the odds are just going to you know, spit out the negative sign, and we're going to get the power of the same thing, which is good because we're going to treat it as a geometric series. So in other words, if negative y is replaced with r, let's call this r, we're going to get r to the fourth plus r cubed plus r squared plus r plus 1. A lot of times people are used to seeing it as 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth, which is the exact same thing, doesn't matter, no big deal. Make sense? Now, as you probably know, hopefully, this can be written either one, same thing. This can be written as r to the fifth power minus 1 over r minus 1. You can also write it the other way around. And now let's replace r with negative y, and that's going to give us negative y to the fifth power minus 1 divided by negative y minus 1. Now negative y to the fifth power is negative of y to the fifth minus 1 divided by negative y minus 1. If you negate top and bottom at the same time, you're going to be getting y to the fifth plus 1 divided by y plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. So here's what we need to be careful about. This tells us that, okay, y to the fifth plus 1 is equal to 0. However, y plus 1 should not equal 0. Make sense? In other words, we're kind of looking at the fifth roots of unity, except for, I mean, not unity, fifth roots of negative 1, because it's going to be negative 1 on the other side, except for the negative 1. So we're going to exclude one of the values. So from here, we get y to the fifth plus 1 equals 0. And then this gives us, now what is y? We called z equals 2y. So y is just going to be half of z to the fifth power plus 1 equals 0. And from here, by making a common denominator, we get z to the fifth plus 32 equals 0. And then we can go ahead and write this as z to the fifth power equals negative 32. 
So we're going to be looking at the fifth roots of negative 32. But notice z should not equal negative 2. And we can kind of talk about what happens if z is equal to negative 2. Actually, you can go ahead and check that right now. If z is negative 2, then you're going to get negative 4 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get 16 divided by negative 2 squared, which is 4. 8 plus 8 is 16. Obviously, negative 4 does not equal 1, right? I don't think so. Okay, so negative 1 definitely, I mean negative 2, does not satisfy this equation. Great. So, all the fifth roots of negative 32 besides negative 2 is going to work. Let's go ahead and write the negative 32 as a complex number. In other words, let's complexify it. That's what we do all the time, right? With exponentials. So, negative 32, its modulus is 32, and then its argument is going to be pi. Because you're looking at a negative real number, which is going to appear on the real axis, but on the negative side, right? So, the angle is pi, but you can always add multiples of 2 pi to it. So let's write it as i times pi plus 2 pi n. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and take the fifth root of both sides. This can be done very easily in this form, which is the polar form. The fifth root of 32 is 2, and then all you have to do here is divide by 5. But let's go ahead and rearrange these terms a little bit, kind of simplify a little bit. I can go ahead and write this as 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi i, and of course when I write it here, I'm going to divide by 5, because raising it to the power 1 over 5 is equivalent to dividing the exponent by 5, right? Great! So this is going to be the general form of our answer, but we're going to replace n with different values, such as what happens if n is equal to 0? You get z equals 2 times, you're not going to get 2, you're going to get 2 times e to the power pi i over 5, and guess what that's equal to? Cosine of pi over 5, which is 36. Let me go ahead and tell you what that's going to look like. Well, maybe we'll look at it at the end. What happens if n is equal to 1? Then z is going to be 2 times Oops, I kind of messed up here. It's supposed to be 2 times e to the power something. 2 times e to the power pi i over 5. And the second root is going to be 2 times e to the power 3 pi i over 5. And then n equals 2 is going to produce 2 times e to the power 7 pi i over 5. And oh, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to get another term in the middle. This is going to be 5 pi i over 5, which is pi i. But this is equal to negative 2. And guess what? We don't want that. That's not a valid solution. Remember, n equals 3 is going to produce 2 times e to the power 7 pi i over 5. And n equals 4, finally, is going to give us 2 times e to the power 9 pi i over 5. Once you know the value of pi over 5, the others are going to be relatively easy to find. Make sense? Great. Now let's go ahead and focus on one of these solutions, which is 2 times e to the power pi i over 5 which can be written as 2 times cosine of pi over 5 plus i times sine pi over 5. Let's write it in standard form. And as you know, cosine of pi over 5, which is cosine of 36 degrees, is 1 plus root 5 over 4. And sine of 36 degrees is, is a little weird, square root of 10 minus 2 root 5 divided by 4. And after multiplying by 2, we can write z sub 1, the first solution, as 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus i times the square root of 10 minus 2 root 5 all over 2. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.